people. And I think for somebody who is new to Christ, you emulate all of those effortlessly. And I find that that is a real testimony to who you are. So without any further ado, I will hand the mic over to you.
summer Hume. That was my first ever trip, and it was just a really cool experience because if you guys haven't been to Hume, I think it's super fun. You get to learn about the Lord, you get to have devos, and you get to play games, and I'm very competitive, so I was like, I'm sign me up. I'm very ready. And then in the winter, we went to Lake Champion, and I had the best time. I got to meet so many people. That's where I found my great group of friends. I was just opened up to people who were all had like same interests and the same love for their father, which was really cool. And um, after we came back from camp, someone made a 21 days after camp Bible study group. And it was on the Bible app, and I opened it. I was like, okay, this is cool. And I look at the first page, and I had never really opened a Bible on my own before. So opening that up, it was a lot. It was a lot at a first glance, and I kind of feel like I just jumped right, jumped right in the deep end. So it was really scary at first. And there was a passage, Devo, and then a section for everyone to comment what they got from it. And I immediately was like, nope, I can't do this. Like, I'm not going to. And then I was like, wait, I really want to be friends with these people. Like, I'll just, I'll just do a Bible plan. Like, we'll see how it goes. So every single day, I'm like reading through this thing for 20 minutes. I just, none of it processes, none of it clicks, and I feel really out of place, and I was really insecure about it. And I wasn't with any of my friends in person doing this. This was kind of like, you go on your own, you read it as you feel, and they comment. So I would try to type up something that I would hear from sermons and something that they had brought up in the text and try to kind of just like, a question from a textbook, and I would kind of try to answer it as best as I thought I could. And I just realized that I hadn't, really process any of the words I was reading. I just sort of did it for approval. And I felt really out of place. And no one was making me feel that way. That was, it's completely, I was super insecure. And I just really thought that no one could really understand that. So I would type up my comment. And then people, when I saw, like, you'd see people could like the comments. And I was like, OK, this is good. This is good. People like it. Like, this sounds like I feel like I'm doing good. I feel like I fit right in. This is perfect. And looking back, it hurts my heart so much that I had to do that every day for 21 days. And when I thought it was over, they added another plan. So I had to start to cycle all over again. But as I kept going, I realized that this wasn't just me struggling. This was a really big learning experience because as much as I wanted to fit in with these friends, that wasn't the reason they were doing it. The reason wasn't to look for approval and everything. It was so we could all join together and just share what we feel because someone might have a mindset that you didn't even know existed. It's really cool to hear what everyone interprets from it. So um, I didn't really truly read God's word as his word. I read it like a textbook and you don't, I felt like I needed to belong. I felt like if I didn't, I didn't belong anywhere. So I thought this was my group and that's what I had to do to be part of something. And I realized you don't need to belong. You just need to be and then God will put you where you need to be. And I should have asked for guidance or help to understand. I have amazing leaders, I have great parents, I have great friends. Anyone around there would have been there for me, but I was just so, I can do this on my own, it'll be okay, and I will make it through. And it took a while, but eventually people started coming to me, and I got to do it with them, and I started understanding, and I felt a lot better. Um, I enjoyed it because it didn't feel like a chore anymore. At a point, it felt less of a religion, more of a relationship, and that turning point was everything for me. And if any of you guys feel like that, I just want you to know, like, you are not alone. I don't know if you guys have been going to church all your life, or if this is your first youth group ever, because I've been there, and it, it feels like you're alone, but you really aren't. There's so many people here that are here for you, and I guarantee you can go up to anybody, and they will be happy to share their story and what this has done for them. <clears throat> I've always had a really rough time comparing myself with other people around me. I just have this, like, I'm very envious of people. I see, like, great qualities, and I'm like, oh, I love that. Like, I want people to see that in me, too. But when you compare yourselves, you start to tell yourself you're not good enough and that why can't I be more like this person? You are made exactly as you are for a reason, and I guarantee that there's qualities that you have that you just do not see. And you're not behind in your walk of faith because this is your own life. How can you be behind in it? God has this plan for you, and you are supposed to follow it as you, as you are. All right. So I have a verse, Proverbs 16, 9. It says, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. And this was on my Bible plan a little while ago. I shared it to my friend Abby. And it just made me realize that we have so much uncertainty for the future, and it gave me peace because it's a reminder that we can only do so much, and God will intervene when he needs to. And we can't control what he does. And 
His path for us has already been determined, so we don't need to worry about our next steps because he's already laying out the footprints. And you can't believe promises you don't know, so that's why it's so important to dig into the word and to read it and to really take it in. And worrying will take so much time out of you, and there's so much unnecessary time that's wasted on what ifs, and I spent so much time worrying when I could have been praying instead. And once I realized that, it became like weight lifted off your shoulders. It's a good feeling. And I would always ask myself, like, why couldn't I have met this person sooner? Like, why couldn't I have met Zoe sooner? I could go to church and meet all these amazing people. Or why didn't I grow up at the church and then I can understand the stories they're talking about from, like, 56ers and everything. But I've learned that God is so intentional with his timing and that every encounter I've had is exactly what it needs to be in his plan for me. And I'd said my life motto has always been everything happens for a reason. And as I start hearing about God, I realize that he is in control and he is the reason. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3.11 says he has made everything beautiful in his time. So when you trust God, you are not losing control, but you are gaining guidance. And we tend to settle for things that are available to us in the moment because we don't want to wait. And that, I think, is a big thing for me because I'm very impatient. Um, we accept what the world has to offer instead of seeing what God has, but he never serves pain without a purpose. And Isaiah 66, 9 says, in the same way, I will not cause pain without allowing something new to be born. And temporary fulfillment will not sustain you in the long run, but be patient, wait with his word for a word. Yeah. And then I have another verse, of course. And so Colossians 4, 5 through 6 says, live wisely among those who are not believers and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Um, yeah, I would say definitely don't be afraid to talk about your faith. I definitely have struggled with that because I would go somewhere and I would feel that I need to fit everyone's standards in that room and I would change my, not my personality, but I would kind of change the way I acted to feel accepted and to realize, hey, I can be your friend. Like, I don't want you to hate me. And so, yeah, I think I regret not talking about it more. And definitely, like, in school, like, when we have options, I'll just stay quiet. And I think that was really, you never know when you can talk to someone. That might be the only chance they ever have to hear about the Lord, and you never know. So I think taking that step and inviting someone to youth group or talking about a verse or even just, hey, I'm going to church this Sunday, then we can hang out. That's always so crucial. And so um, people may see his light through us and just be drawn to it, just like I was. Um, and I ended up here because of it, and uh, we have to decide if we're going to let our fear get in the way of someone knowing about the Lord, because there's really a gamble. It's really, are we going to let that five seconds of awkwardness really affect us, or are we going to share who we are and be truthful? All right. Matthew 7, 8 says, For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You can't find something that you're not searching for, so I think that I had always been looking for a best friend that I could call my own, that it was mutual, and I always felt like the odd one out and longed for someone that had like energy like me. And you guys see I have a lot of energy, so that's definitely hard to find. Uh, but wouldn't like turn away, instead accept the fact that I'm silly and accept me as I am. And I was just done changing my personality depending on who I was around and fit other people's standards. And it took me so long to figure out who I am right now because of that because of the insecurity. And when I started going to church and learning about Jesus, I realized that it was the relationship that I would have been searching for this entire time. And that's what I shared when I got baptized. So, um, yeah, I was always looking for someone to confide in, someone who understands me, and someone who thinks I am beautifully and wonderfully made, and I found that right here. And I don't have a thing to change about myself because I am loved by him, and all of you, I hope, agree and think the same way about yourselves. And once you realize that, it becomes a lot easier to stop fitting the worldly standards you have. Um, yeah, God has gifted me such amazing people in my life, not just since I've come to church. I've had them my entire lives, and yeah. <laughs> I've had them my whole lives, and I am very lucky to be in a position to say that. I have people in my life that will make their dad drive to the hospital and wave at you through the window because they can't go in. I have people who will make everything a two-person job with me, who will send me videos that remind me of them, who will pray with me, who will sit front row at my baptisms because they know it means the world to me, sisters who sing in the car, and people who never allow me to feel like I'm less than. And God will bring people into your life when he needs them the most, and nothing is by accident or by chance. 
and too close, I just want to say, if there's anything I want you guys to remember from you being up here, I want to say that you're not alone. No matter what that could be, if it means you're not alone physically, mentally, spiritually, because it's, it's really hard and I understand that. And it took me so long to realize who I am and to step into this, uh, step up here and get to talk to you all, you guys. And I hope that if you think you can relate, you can come up to me or any of the leaders or anybody. I'm sure anyone will be grateful that you even step out of your comfort zone and you got to come and you share this. And even though it may not seem so, there are people who will pray for you and who are, understand you completely. And asking for help does not make you weak. My mom teaches me that all the time. I'm really grateful. Um, asking for help is really helpful, is <laughs> beneficial because it makes you more vulnerable and um, you can open up. And when the times that you are struggling, you realize it's not a one and done. And sometimes you do need to make that second trip to be able to unload because you cannot carry that all on your own. So thank you guys for making my youth group such a memorable place. And I'm so happy I get to share with all you guys. Thank you for being so great to me. first five seconds and then just be silly or goofy afterwards, it works. And then lastly, you, you said of Zoe, the reason I'm here is because a friend invited me. Anyone else here because a friend invited them to church? How cool is that? That's why so many of us are here because a friend invited us. In small group, what we're going to do is talk about um, one of the questions that Harper and I wrote is, um, have you found your people? Have you found the people in your life that you want to be around that will make you better? So we're going to talk about that in small group. So I'm going to pray, and then we'll be dismissed. So you bow your heads and pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, thank you for Harper's words. Thank you that you anointed her words tonight, um, and she got to share from her heart. Lord, this series of getting up to hear from the seniors just blessed me so much. And Lord, I ask that as we go into the small group time, that we can spend time opening up about the people in our life and um, if they're supporting us, and just as we're on our own individual walks with God, Lord. So we love you. We ask all these things in your son's name. Can we give it up one more time for Harper? Woo!